beginning with verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Did you read that with me? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But at that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man coming. You would go down with me to chapter 25, beginning with verse 1. Back to chapter 25, beginning with verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise, everybody say the wise, the wise. took oil in their vessels with their lamps. <laughs> and while the bridegroom tarried, they all, everybody say they all, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins, all ten of them, arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye gather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Everybody say, for yourselves. Yeah. And while they went to buy. And while they went to buy. And while they went to buy. Mm -hmm. The bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. Yeah. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other birds and said, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I said, Say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Can we pray? Would everybody pray with me right now out loud? In the name of Jesus, I pray. For the mercy of God to touch our hearts. Cause us, Lord Jesus, to be freshly aware, acutely sensitive, Lord, to the moving of the Holy Ghost. Lord, let our excuses and our delay and our procrastination, Lord, let it all God fall away. Lord, Lord God, let the scales fall from our eyes. Let the deception, Lord, be washed from our souls. Lord, we pray that we, O oh God, Hallelujah. Amen.
amen, amen, amen. You can be seated. Today, today, I want to preach to you like it is my last chance to preach to new birth. As I said at the beginning, it is my personal mission, vision, passion, and burden that not one of you would leave here today not ready for the coming of the Lord. If you have not yet been baptized, the water is ready, it's clean, there are robes and there are towels. If you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, it's not time for debate, it's time to obey. It's time to get everything right and ready for the coming of the Lord. If you've not received the Holy Ghost, amen, and not experienced that infilling of God's Spirit and spoken tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance, it's not time to tell. I believe in the coming of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Keaton, I have a slide show back there if you could put it up. I believe in the coming of, of Jesus Christ. Just That just as Jesus ascended into heaven prior to the day of Pentecost, I believe that in that same manner He will come down from heaven to earth. Amen. When He was here on the earth, He was crucified. Yea, He was risen from the grave. And he was seen for 40 days of about 500 people saw him, amen, after his passion. And after that, the Bible tells us that he ascended into heaven. Yeah. Amen. I am given to know that uh, because of the way it is described, it was something that happened. He, he ascended into heaven. Yeah. And the Bible says that the angels appeared and they said, Why stand ye here gazing? Yeah. Go and tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Mm -hmm. Amen. I believe the Lord's coming back. Yes, sir. I believe the Lord's coming back. I don't believe it's a fairy tale. I don't believe it's science fiction. Amen. I don't believe it's a myth or mythology. I believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 When the Lord left this place, he left a plan of salvation. He left the pathway to grace. He, he gave people and all of us, including today, I believe that we are living in a dispensation of grace. Yeah. I believe that we are living at a, a time where the judgment of God is being held at bay because He desires that His house will be full. He desires to see men and women, boys and girls, to be redeemed by His blood. Amen. To be baptized name to be filled with His Holy Ghost. I believe He's waiting so that someone else could be saved. Yeah. But I believe the days are shortening and shortening and the time of the Lord's coming is at hand. I believe it's something we need to grasp. That when Jesus comes back there will be no more grace in the earth. Anyone that teaches and believes that there's going to be a second chance after the church is gone, that is not a biblical concept. Amen. If you're not right when it comes, you'll be left and judged with the unbeliever. Amen. Everyone whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life are going to be those that are taken up. Amen. At His appearing. If you don't go up at the rapture, amen, you're not going to go up. Amen. You're going to be judged. Now, I understand that we live in a world of tremendous theological confusion. People think of Jesus Christ as some sort of Santa Claus that just loves everybody and, and, and don't expect anything from anybody. And, and, and we'll, and we'll just, 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 just let it go. He just loves you. Everybody sees Jesus as some uh, paternal grandfather or grandmother that never will give you a whipping and never will correct you. Give you candy and bubble gum all day. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is not your grandma. Jesus Christ is not your grandpa. Jesus Christ is not your mama. Jesus Christ is not your daddy. And I'm telling you, when the, the day has come, when there is no more grace, uh, yeah. judgment is coming to the world. Yeah. 
you will find the book called Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, no doubt it is a, it is a challenge to the heart and the mind to truly comprehend everything yes. that is in here. But the book of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus Christ. There is a dimension of Jesus that you don't see in the gospel until you get to the book of Revelation. We see Jesus in the gospel as a, as, as a Savior that forgives, a Savior that loves, a Savior that heals, a Savior that delivers. But I'm telling you, we see a revelation of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation that is not seen in the rest of the New Testament. We see Him as a God that brings judgment yes. upon the earth and the evildoers, the sinners and the wicked and the unbeliever. God's going to judge this world. And I believe in that. And I believe it is important for us as the people of God. I believe it is, it is said in the epistles that we, therefore knowing the terror of the Lord. One of the messages that is uh, given uh, credence to a, a time of awakening in North America is a message that was preached by Jonathan Edwards called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And we're given to know this was a frail man with a poor eyesight and a weak voice. But he read that message and as he would read and preach that message, people would fall and wail and travail because they realized the wickedness of their own flesh. And they realized that if the Lord came, they would be judged. I believe that Jesus Christ is not only a God of grace, but He is one day going to be a God of judgment. The Old Testament gives us a glimpse into the nature of God. How many of you know God does not change? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we are given to get a glimpse of the values and the concepts of God when we read in the Old Testament that God from the very beginning brought judgment. Amen. He created all there was and He breathed in the life Adam and Eve and created them and put them in a place of paradise. But when they broke the covenant, He ejected them out of paradise and He cursed them. The very two, you could say the very first son and daughter of God were judged by God. And so when I tell you today, Jesus doesn't change. And Jesus is a God of love. But His nature of love does not change the part of His nature that demands justice and judgment. We live in a day when the Bible that was written thousands of years ago foretold things that seemed impossible. I remember I was 12 years old and my pastor was preaching on the coming of the Lord. That was 30 years ago for those of you that are, are keeping up with the math here today. My pastor preached on the coming of the Lord and he told us something that seemed to be impossible. He said that in North Dallas, which we live in Dallas, he said in North Dallas there is a machine that is installed in the bank and you can take a little plastic card and you can feed it into the computer and you can put your personal number in there and it will give you money from your bank account. I remember being so mesmerized by that fact that I, re I remember standing out on the sidewalk in front of my house underneath the tree and when the sun was shining, the wind was blowing and I was telling my little friends standing there with slingshots in our pockets and bugs in our jar And these things were foretold thousands of years ago that every man would have a number. And without a number, that, and without that, that submission to the, the, uh, the, the Antichrist, they could neither buy nor sell. But today, the technology is in place. The governmental concepts are there. There is a cry in the world that there would be a way done away with money and change and checks and where we could just take it our hand or our forehead and just scan it in. Mm -hmm. Can you see that, that, that the coming of the Lord 
It's right here. Yes. The Bible talks about one world government. And we see even our nation is part of a government that is endeavoring to bring about the dissolution of boundaries and dissolving of, of national identities and national nationality and, and all these things and that everyone would come under one government. No doubt but many of us Americans are against that. But it doesn't matter. I mean, we're part of that. They're passing laws in the UN. They're talking about being able to make sure no one can own a gun. Amen. And they're trying to take away national, uh, national differences. Everybody say one world government. The Bible told about it thousands of years ago when we're living in a day where it can happen. The Bible foretold that Israel would come back into their own land and become a nation. Do you know how impossible that was 2,000 years ago? A thousand years ago? 200 years ago? But because of World War II, Europe and America, uh, uh, fueled by pity and, and shame, gave the Jews back their land. The United Nations and America recognized them as a country. That was an impossibility. And today, we're living in the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. A little bitty country that's smaller than Mississippi dominates our church better be ready it's not enough to be in the church 
You got to be ready. Ah, uh, yes. Say Just that. Just not be pure. You got to be ready. The Bible says there were ten virgins. And I could preach a little while about the lack of purity and virginity in our world today. Amen? And the Bible says that there were ten virgins. And in among those ten virgins, only five of them were ready. The click, clock, click, clock, tick, tock of the clock. Time is expiring. Yes. As the tree falls, there shall the lie. And we live in a world full of wickedness. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Or God is not a fool. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Hear me today. The God, Jehovah of the Old Testament, Jesus of the New that we worship and praise is a God of mercy and grace and justice and judgment. We have been living in a time of grace, but the time of grace is going to come to a close. Think with me in the Bible. Judgment. In the book of Revelations, in the book of Genesis, actually to be the first of the book, the Bible says there came a time when the Lord repented that He ever made man because the heart of humanity was on wicked continually. And He determined to destroy the earth. But the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. God always provides a plan for those He gives grace. And today, though we live in a world of wickedness that is on the fast track to hell, there is a plan of salvation. There is a way of grace. There is an ark of safety. There is a way to be saved from the coming judgment. And, and, and no one moved with fear to the saving of his household. Yes. But there came a time when the, when the, the boat was built and the Lord had called and brought the animals and Noah and his family into the boat. And the Bible says that God shut the door. And for seven days, the animals was in that boat together and I can imagine that on the sixth day they probably wondered, I thought it was going to rain. But I'm here to tell you today that when God shuts the door of grace, it's over. Right. When God shuts the door, when God shuts the door, no man can open, can open it. Can Grandma can't open it. Grandpa can't open it. Mama can't open it. Daddy can't open it. Pastor can't open it. And I'm telling you that just as God shut the door, the Bible and the great storm began. Yeah. The Bible says the foundations of the earth were broken up. Yeah. And then we cannot fully appreciate what a climactic experience that was Hollywood in their effort to duplicate by technology and graphic simulation cannot tell us what the flood was. But scientific and geographic evidence shows us there was a worldwide flood. They found shells on the mountaintops. I'm here to tell you that that God that brought the judgment of the world into account in the days of Noah is the same God we serve uh, today. Yeah. That's not another God. That's not a second person in the Godhead. It is the same God. And we would be a fool to believe that God's changed from the Old Testament to the New. No of grace, but the book of Revelation is just as real as the book of Genesis. And just like I believe in the flood of water, there is a flood of fire coming yes. to this world. Yes. And we got to recognize yes. that we don't know when the Lord is coming. But what if this week was the last week we had? What if this week, the next seven days, was the last days we had? And the Church. 
There came a time when the Lord said, Shall I withhold from Abraham what I'm about to do? And he told, told Abraham, Sodom and Gomorrah, yes. your deeds have come up before me as a smell that I cannot stand. And I am going to go destroy that city yes. and all of its iniquity. And Moses and Abraham demonstrated the character of God that was in him. And he spoke up and said, Will God destroy the wicked with the righteous? Peradventure, if there be fifty righteous souls, will you spare the city? And the Lord said, If I find fifty, I will spare. Here is five cities in the plain. Over fifty thousand people live. Up to maybe a hundred thousand people live in those five places there that God was coming down to destroy. And Abraham said, can you find 50? And the Lord said, okay. And Abraham began to think about what he knew about Sodom. Peradventure, there'd be 10 minus 50. And all you can find is 40. We spare the cities. We you spare them? You won't destroy the righteous with the wicked. Will you spare them? If you can find 40, the Lord says, yes. If I cannot find 40 in all of that city, amen, I will withhold my judgment. And no, no, Abraham continued, well, what about 30? Uh -huh. And the Lord said, okay, 30. And Abraham, he's feeling unsure of, he, he's very sure of the iniquity in Sodom. Uh -huh. And he says, oh, well, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. But what if there's 20? And the Lord says, okay, Abraham, if there's 20, I'll spare them the judgment. And uh, we know what happened. Yeah. Abraham said, oh, Herod, get you this one last time, I'll speak. What if you can find 10? If you can find 10 righteous souls. And God says, if I can find 10 righteous souls in the land of Sodom, I will spare the city. And the Lord turns around with two angels with him, and he leaves. special about them. And he sees the, the dawning of the sun and he says, oh, gentlemen, hey, now won't you come stay in my house tonight? And those two men said, no, no, we're we going to stay and sleep on the street. And, and, and Lot knew the wickedness of that city. And he said, no, you can't. It's not safe. And then they, they had a little argument. And finally, Lot constrained them and pulled them into the house. And as the sun went down, the wickedness of that city, the Bible says, men of the city rose up and knocked on the door of Lot and said, we want you to give us these two men that have come into your house that we may know them, that we may rape them, that we may abuse them. And Lot said, no, not so. These men have come under my house. How wicked was the city. Lot said, well, let me give you my daughters. Let me give you Two virgin daughters that not known a man in this city said, No, we don't want them. We want those two men. And the Bible says that the angels reached out there and pulled Lot back in because they were about to abuse him. And the Bible says that they struck those men with blindness. And these men were so wicked that they still began to try to feel after the door, even after blindness. Can I tell you that we're living in the generation of Sodom and Gomorrah? And I've heard people say this, the, the prophets, it talks about the sin of Sodom. It was the a, a fullness of bread and idleness of time. And I recognize that. America is bit by the sins of Sodom because we have fullness of bread and we have They destroy 
wife and two daughters. And he told them to flee into the mountains and don't look back. And they begin to flee. The Bible says that Lot's wife looked back. And she became a pillar of salt. The Lord saved and never drug out four people. I believe the Lord is just and I believe He went. And just as the death angel surveyed Egypt to find those that didn't have the blood on the door, I believe He went and for the righteous in Sodom. And I believe He visited the teenagers and He visited the, the washeteer and He visited the barber shops and He visited the restaurants and McDonald's. He, you know, literally. I believe the Lord's Spirit went through that city looking for righteous. And I believe the reason why He saved Lot and his wife and his two daughters was not because of their righteousness, but it was respect of Abraham. Can I tell you, I believe sometimes the Lord will go to great lengths to save our family. Not because of any good they do, but because of the good we do. Because the prayers we pray, the covenants we keep, and the sacrifices we make, I believe the Word of God shows us that He'll go the second, third, fourth mile to reach our children and to reach our family. Many of us are here today not by our own that's striving, but because of somebody else praying and praying and praying. And the Lord through their prayer saved us and has preserved us and protected us to this day. Amen. And this is my last sermon. Amen. I'm not ashamed to tell you why I believe. Amen. And it may not be politically correct to say the things I've said, but the Lord did not call us to be politically correct. He called us to preach the truth without fear of man or favor in this world. Amen. We must stand our truth while the rest of the world is compromising. I saw an article today. I believe it's in the New York Times today. And it's talking about can anyone save liberal Christianity? And it's written about the Episcopal Church. The Episcopal Church who has been on the cutting edge of liberalizing the Bible. They were one of the first religious organizations to ordain homosexuals. And, and, and they're having to sell their buildings and their churches are going bankrupt. And, and it's the fastest uh, shrinking denomination in America in the past 10 years and it's shrunk by 33 percent. Can I tell you that you cannot compromise and prosper? You cannot uh, uh, water down and justify the Word of God away from what it says to life and prosper? Thank you for the Somebody word. said, Praise God. Praise God. Can I can I go? Can you give me about 15 more minutes? Might be my last sermon. Amen. I don't want to leave anything off today. Free. The sin, the sin that we live in. But let me tell you, uh, God is not a respecter of persons or perversions. That will all will be judged. Together. The Lord will judge the fornicators, the adulterers, drunkards, liars, idol worshipers. God will judge them all alike and together. Some people would like to say, well, I'm not this while justifying that. But this and that will go in the fire together. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. They shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if I can get a preacher to say, don't make it true. Just because a preacher don't preach against it, don't make it all right. The word of God is true, and every man can be a liar. Amen. Judgment is coming to this world. The pattern of judgment that we see in the scripture is without debate. Just this past week, I saw a news clip. Where there are people are saying they are finding uh, uh, Egyptian chariot wheels 
in the Red Sea. Brother Jonah was telling me uh, via Facebook that he was watching something on the Discovery Channel where they have they, they believe they found where the Red Sea was parted and they walked across on dry ground. And that is a great message of deliverance for the church. But it is also a message of judgment for the world. I'm here to tell you the same God that brought Israel out of Egypt judged Egypt. And can I tell you that there is a tremendous day coming. The Bible calls it the great and terrible day of the Lord. There's not going to be any day like when the Lord tells Gabriel, Gabriel, blow your horn. Can you put one of those slides up, King? Gabriel, blow your horn. That's going to be some kind of day. The Apostle
And it is. If the Word of God is true, and it is. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but My Word shall not. Jesus is coming. And I want to be ready. How many of you feel that way? Can somebody lift up your voice and pray right now? Anybody know how to intercede in this place? Can we pray right now? Lord Jesus, God, I pray that you would help us to quit living in tomorrow. That you would help us, Lord, to quit procrastinating what we need to do. And for us to get settled and set in our mind that it is now, it is today, it is ready that we must be. It is ready that we must be. It is ready we must make. Hallelujah. Can we stay together right now? You say, well, I'm ready. Are you sure? If right now, there was a great earthquake. And this building began to shake and rock from side to side. And the ceiling began to collapse upon us. Are you ready? If you have a pain inside of you that you don't know what it is, you may not make it to the hospital or not. Are you ready? We may drive home in a day and someone may cross over Are you ready? As sure as I'm standing here today, the Lord put this in my heart on Friday morning at about 10.30. And my first thought when I had this thought was, man, that's a good sermon. I think I could preach that. But you know, I have just a little bit of caution in my spirit today to say that what I am preaching today may not be just a sermon. The Lord in His mercy may have touched the heart of this pastor to preach this today as one last warning to you before you enter eternity. I don't know when the Lord's coming. Jesus said it's going to come in an hour that we think not. But the coming of the Lord for us as individuals can happen at any point. Little children die every day. Teenagers die every day. Healthy men die every day. Healthy women die every day. Men and women, boys and girls die every day. And so many of them enter eternity unprepared for what lays ahead. And today we have an opportunity to make things right. And I, I would like to open this church today with prayer. The, 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 the Baptists have already beat us. If we leave right now, we're going to have to wait for them to get through eating. <laughs> so we might as well not be in a hurry today. That's right. That's right. Because will we regret 15 extra minutes spent in prayer? If it keeps us, prepares us for the coming of the Lord. Yes. I'd like to open this front for everyone that would. If you're not, if you're not comfortable doing that, I, I, I implore you, I encourage you, find a place to pray where you can call, pour out your, your heart. Lord, forgive me today. Forgive me, Lord Jesus, for every wicked idea and wicked thought, every evil deed, every cross word. Every bitter feeling, every act, Lord, of, of, of disagreement, every word of disunity. Lord God, everything, Lord Jesus, that I have allowed God to come into my mind, Lord, I'm hoping, I'm praying, Lord, that you would help us today. Forgive us today of all of our sins. Forgive us today, Lord Jesus, of all of our unrighteousness. Forgive us today, Lord Jesus, for every Lord, for 
give up.